you may notice that my user interface has evolved once again. I was doing a little test animation and I noticed that here in my dope sheet, which is the area of Blender, it's a window which allows you to control your frames and copying, pasting, and moving frames. I noticed that I wanted to be able to uh, stretch it out much more and be able to, so I could change it uh, back and forth between the graph editor but the problem with that was I had the timeline above it so I would have to stretch out the timeline then stretch out the uh, dope sheet editor which was not very time efficient and I made that little change and that opened up my mind to realize a few other things that um, I wanted to change and it kind of evolved into this Blender Sensei format uh, 2.0 which you can download in the description of this video. Previously, I had my outliner over here and I had my UV image editor uh, down here in this window. But I sort of decided that I had probably way too much room for, uh, for my timeline and my dope sheet editor here when I could uh, split this space up into my UV image editor and then keep this entire block here just for the properties panel. And in any one of these, whether it's the world tab or modifiers or materials or whatever, can exist so many options that I decided the entire right screen here of Blender deserves all of this space for these various panels. Also, why not move my outliner? Why not move that over to the bottom left? There's many different programs that use this kind of format of selecting objects and layers and things like that. So I decided, hey, that's you know kind of the functionality of the outliner. And in the outliner, I can control visibility, whether or not it will sh it'll be that item will be rendered, and I can lock the item. So this is very similar to Flash, After Effects, and other programs. And the last thing I have here, uh, if you'll notice this tiny little box here, I've gotten rather used to using my tilde key, and your tilde key is your little um, squiggly line key below your escape key. I've gotten rather used to using that to uh, expand my windows. Um, so instead of having to go down to the menu here and find the uh, node editor, I found that I use the UV image editor and the node editor, which you do your compositing in uh, quite frequently. So I set up a little cube here in the corner by the UV image editor so I can just put my mouse right over this cube, hit tilde key, and that's going to pop up my node editor, which you do a lot of your compositing. And then, of course, you have your UV image editor, which by default is where your uh, rendered image shows up at. So you can just hover your mouse over here and hit the tilde key and then here and jump back and forth between these two very quickly. And also, it's a little bit of a space to always be able to see whatever texture you're working on or your rendered image. If you would like to use it, uh, I'll provide a uh, link to this file in the description of this video. And all you do to be able to use it, you want to go over here, change your 3D view to user preferences, and then under file, make sure load UI is checkmarked. And that way when you load the, it's just a regular Blender file, but when you load it, it will then load up everything, all these layout, uh, how this one is. Then if you want to keep it that way, you go to File, Save User Settings, and you're cool, you're golden. Then every time you click File and New, Reload Startup File, it will uh, load up this setting. If you don't want to keep it that way, which is also fine, just don't um, say, uh, save your settings. And now it's time for us to begin production on this film, and we're going to start by modeling a house. So let's select this top face of this cube, press 1 to go in front view. If I zoom in up on the cube, you can see the grid becomes subdivided. I want to zoom out just to the point where uh, the grid takes up about four of these grid boxes make the size of this cube. Then I'm going to press E to extrude, hold control, and move it up to and now I have pretty much doubled the size of this cube here. So I'm going to go back into front view. I'm going to hit tab to go out of object mode, hit G to grab, hold control to constrain it to the grid, 
and bring it up one. So now I have it set right up on the grid here. So I'm going to hit tab to go back into edit mode. And I'm going to create a roof here out of this top bit. And I'm going to just do that by holding S to scale and middle mouse to constrain it to the X axis. And like I'm, I have mentioned before, I'm actually pretty bad at remembering things like which axis I'm on. And I didn't know right away that that was the X axis because I suddenly got good at remembering things. If you'll notice the little icon, uh, the red, green, and blue icon in the left uh, bottom left corner of your 3D view, this quickly uh, can tells you which axis you're on or which axis uh, that you want to use. So as you can see, when I press the middle mouse, the green Y is going in a similar direction, not exactly, but a similar direction to the green line you see um, on my editing point, and the red is going to a similar line, and the blue is similar line to the Z. So that that's a way you can quickly know if you're looking at Y, X, or Z axis here. But we're going to constrain this and scale it not all the way to the end to where it points like that, but to where we got a little bit of space like that. Then I'm going to select this face and I'm going to press W, which brings up my specials editing uh, window and select inset faces. And as soon as you select inset faces, you're going to now have this uh, scrollable selection type here of something that you, you can see something that's being done to this face. And what we want to do is we want to make an inset that uh, gives a little bit of a border around this triangle, but we don't want we don't want it crossing like this. As you can see, the top lines there are intersecting, and we don't want that. We want about right there. So I'll zoom in on that. You can see these lines have not intersected, which is good. So I'm going to select this face here, hit E to extrude, and bring it just a little bit back. Then I'm going to grab this little face right here hit G to grab, hold middle mouse to constrain it to the Y axis as I can see down in the corner and pull it out a little bit just to give myself some interesting looking little architecture here. So if I put my mouse somewhere over my object and I press control R it's going to bring up um, this pink line here and if I move my mouse away you can see that it goes away but if I move it uh, towards a ver uh, vertical direction uh, somewhere in the middle we see this pink line. I can also, I could do a vertical cut or if I move my mouse uh, down towards uh, horizontally I can do a horizontal cut. We want to do a vertical cut and the first click we make will send us into uh, a loop slide mode to where we can pretty much decide now that we've chosen that we want a, a vertical cut it's now um, now we're making the decision where to make the vertical cut pretty much. But I want to bring this up just about uh, about middle ways of that second um, uh, square on the grid there. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then I'm going to click to confirm. And so now I have cut the geometry of my house all the way around. Then I'm going to hit space and uh, select face and choose this uh, face here. And I'm going to extrude this out to make a little side room. I'm going to hit E to extrude, hold control to constrain it to the grid. Uh, and so now I have a little side room, which is about half of the width of the house, which these dimensions are totally arbitrary. You can do whatever you want. Uh, but I just like to be uh, a little uh, a little more precise starting out with my stuff usually. But next, what we're going to do is click on this face here, and we're going to go into front view and I want to hit E to extrude and then I'm going to hold constrain and drop this about two notches below my main uh, roof there and now what I want to do is hit S to scale this, hold middle mouse to constrain it to the Y axis and bring it to about there, that's pretty good. I can then click on this face, press W inset faces and make a border around here as well. Once again I don't want those top lines to cross because that's going to make my geometry look real nasty. 
and that's good. Then I'm going to uh, select that triangle there, hit E to extrude, and it will pull it back. I can bring in, an, I can bring an extrusion by the way, inward or outward, as soon as I make it. When you hit E, it immediately, you know, moves into this movement mode, and we can push it back just as well as we can push it forward. I'm going to push it back just a little bit. I'm going to grab this one little face at the top here, like we did uh, earlier on the other side, and hit G to grab. So we want a little bit of an overhang like that. I think next what I would like to do, I'm going to go into front view, is I think I would like to bring these, the walls, make them a little shorter by comparison to these ceilings. So I'm going to hit, hit space and select vertex selection. Then I'm going to hit Z to go into wireframe and double click off the stage to deselect everything. And I went into wireframe so that when I select all of these uh, vertex points here from the front, it's going to select everything inside and behind it as well. If I did that in solid by going back to Z and I, and I selected that, then you would see that these points are not selected and that would not be very good for wanting to move the whole floor up. So I'm going to hit Z to go into wireframe and uh, lasso select these. And I'm going to hit Z to jump out of wireframe, hit G to grab, hold control to constrain, and just bring it, I think, two notches up. Then I'm going to hit tab to go in object mode, G to grab, control to constrain it to the grid, bring it down. And I like those uh, portions a little bit better. Before we do any more work on this uh, house, what I would like to do is add a mirror modifier so that all the work we do on the right side will be done on the left. So I'm going to go into front view, hit tab to go into edit mode, then I'm going to press control R to make our, to bring up our loop cut, and I want it directly down the middle of this part of the house here. I'm going to click, click again to confirm, and that's an exact cut there. So now I want to go uh, hit Z to hop into wireframe so that when I select the left side of this house, I'll select everything behind it. I'm going to double click to deselect everything. And what I want to do is select everything exactly left of this line because this is going to be mirrored on the left side here. So I'm going to hit B to do a box selection and then drag that over to there. Once again, I want to make sure I've got everything left of this line selected but nothing on the actual line selected or else things will get bad. So I'm going to hit delete. I want to delete the vertices, hit Z. And you can see I've now Willy wonka this house here. Um, so next, I want to go to Modifiers, click Add Modifier, and select Mirror. And since we've been creating this house right on the Y-axis fault line here, it mirrors perfectly over the X-axis. Uh, if you were creating an object and coincidentally you weren't staring at the object straight in the face when you go into front view, then you may have to um, experiment with whatever axis you're on to get the object to mirror correctly. Additionally, say you had been building something on the left side here instead of the right, you may find that with, when you turn the mirror modifier on, it appears as though nothing's happening. What you want to do is hit A to select all the points within your mesh and then hit G to grab and then you can move that around until you find the right position you need for your object to be mirrored properly. So I'm going to hit Control Z to undo that. I want to make sure clipping is selected. If clipping is not selected, I deselect that and I grab this point here and I hit G. You'll see that it, one, when I move it to the right will create a huge gap and two, if I push it far over, it's going to go into that bit of the mesh and I, I don't want that so I'm going to hit control Z and once I turn clipping on hit G to grab they are they are stuck together here and nothing that I bring over from this side over this way is going to cross over in a gross way so I'll hit control Z to undo that and exactly what I mean here what I want to do is connect this side of the roof over here um, and actually what I want to do is go into face selection mode, grab this face, hit E to extrude, and 
I'm going to delete this face here, delete face, and I don't want to delete vertices on here. I only want to delete the face. Um, if I if I hit delete and then deleted the vertices, this would delete all this face as well as the points that construct uh, these faces over here. So it would take away the information Blender needs to make these faces right here, which I don't want to go away. So that way, I'm um, so I'm just going to hit delete and select face and delete that. And then I'm going to hit space and select edge selection. And I want to grab this edge right here. Now, uh, if I press Z to go into wireframe mode so we can see what's going on under this roof, I'll press G, hold middle mouse to constrain that to the X axis. And because I have clipping on, these two are going to um, collide here instead of crossing over, which I don't want. But actually what I think I'm going to do is I'll hit control Z. I think instead of just moving that top bit over, I want this whole entire uh, edge here. If I hit Z to go back into solid mode, I want this whole bit to meet in the middle here. So we'll hit Z to go into wireframe. And I'm going to hold Alt and select this edge. And Alt does a loop selection, which means that it will follow the edge all the way around to where it comes back. And that's a very a much quicker way to uh, uh, when you need to select an entire loop. So I'm going to hit G to grab, middle mouse to constrain, and slam it right there in the middle because they're not going to go past each other. And that's what I want to happen and click to confirm that. Hit Z to go back into solid mode. And that's a little bit more what we're looking for. I think though, I want to raise this uh, ceiling up some. So I'm going to do face selection, grab this face, shift, select that face to add it to the selection, G to grab, middle mouse to constrain, going upwards. And I think that's uh, a little more what I'm looking for. And I didn't do this on purpose, but I kind of like this uh, height thrown up here on this uh, bit of the geometry. So much so that I think I'm going to grab this face here and pull it down. G to grab, middle mouse to pull it down. And yeah, I think I like that a little bit. Well, first, let's go ahead and save this so we don't screw it up. So I'm going to go to, and if you've been following along with the series, I'm going to go to File, Save as. Uh, we've created a Blender folder which we're keeping all our assets for this project in and I've been keeping that folder on the desktop. You may have it on your hard drive or any random other place. But I'm going to go to Desktop, Blender, and we want to create a new folder for our scenes. And Let's just call it Scenes, hit Enter, and in there we'll call it House 01 save as blender file okay so let's add a little trim around this house and to do that I'm gonna press control R to do a loop cut but instead of doing a vertical one like we've done before we're gonna do a horizontal one and we're gonna click and bring that right down to a little bit around the bottom there click to confirm change to face selection I'm gonna hold alt and select this face and you'll see that when you do a loop selection, um, Blender doesn't always exactly get it right what you wanted. This time the loop selection went up and down um, vertically. And what I wanted was it to, to go the loop selection to, to move right around this corner. Uh, so just hold Alt and keep clicking towards the direction that you want it to uh, loop select until you uh, get what you want there. We're going to do another inset face like we did up here, but first we want to hit T to bring up our tool shelf because we're going to have to edit the inset properties specifically, which uh, the tool shelf allows us to do. So if I hit W to bring up our uh, specials mesh editing uh, window here and I click inset faces, I'm before doing anything, I'm just going to click again immediately and you'll see that this turns into an option for inset faces. So we'll click that down and we have basically two different values we want to pay attention to. We have the thickness which you can see it's um, 
creating the thickness of that border on the inset and the depth, which is how much it's extruding it outwardly uh, in a mathematical fashion. And that's the advantage of a inset face is that it extrudes all of these faces um, exactly uh, the same distance as all the all the other walls, whereas a scale would do it a little bit more confused and look a little crappier. But we just want to set the thickness here to zero because we don't really want any thickness. And we want the depth uh, to where it's just coming off a little bit, just a little bit noticeable to give us a little bit cooler looking geometry. So I'll hit tab and that sends us back into uh, object mode and I think we're looking pretty good uh, so far. But let's go ahead and add ourselves some more details onto this house.